Winter's on my head, but eternal spring is in my heart. Guten gardening, everybody. Do you know that according to the weather service, Buffalo's had over a hundred inches of snow already this winter. And Florida, Florida averages about 70 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter time. Well, right now here in zone five, Wisconsin, it's about 29 degrees Fahrenheit. And I can imagine those 70 degree temperatures. I'm just thinking right now what I could be doing in the garden at that time. But even if you're not in a climate where you can do outdoor gardening in the winter, there are plenty of other things you can do to keep that love of gardening fresh inside. Now in today's video, I am going to give you an updated tour of some of what's growing in our indoor garden so you can keep track of the progress right along with me. But you know, for some of us, the winter time is like a, a time of survival. In fact, we asked our community what types of things they do if they're not able to garden outside or, or during the winter in general. And some of you mentioned indoor gardening. Some of you talked about the fact that you live in warmer climates and so you're lucky enough that you can keep gardening all winter long. And I guess for some of you that's amazing because you've got potatoes growing in the winter. I'd love to have that. And other people talked about canning and quilting. There's just a lot of activities out there, but I want to focus as we go through this tour, as I show you what's going on in my garden, I want to focus in on some of the things you can do for your garden even during the winter. You know, the spring and summer are incredibly busy times in the garden. And so if you have a little bit more downtime in the winter, which I think most gardeners do, even if like us, you're doing a lot of indoor gardening, the winter is the perfect time to go ahead and get started with some of your plans for the spring. And I'll tell you one of the things that I like to do, and I'll show you something really fancy here. I don't go at all to this degree, but I like to do a nice, simple, rough sketch of what the layout of our garden space is and then try to figure out what we want to go where. Plan that out ahead of time so that we're not guessing once we've got our seedlings ready, we know where we want them to be placed and we can allocate that space. One thing I will recommend is if you're gonna do a rough sketch of your garden, try to make it a, at a scale of some sort so that it's at least fairly accurate because you don't want a bunch of little circles and squares in an area that's not gonna fit what you have laid out. So sketching out and planning out your garden and preparing for what seeds you need to buy or what seeds you plan to start, that is a great first step. And a secondary follow-up to that is getting some of those seeds started at the appropriate time. And most of these seedlings we started as replacements for those that might not have developed in our green stalk or elsewhere where we planted. But some of these, like our onions, we're just getting them going here. You can see they're popping through. They're mostly about an inch, inch and a half tall. We wanted to prep our onions ahead of time because that's the timing we need here in Zone 5, Wisconsin to get these plants going. And the winter time, especially in these colder growing zones, when you can't really get outside unless you have some sort of cold frame or maybe a greenhouse outdoors, this is part of that preparation for the warmer seasons. And I'll tell you, thinking about gardening, getting those seeds started, that's something that just gets you going because then you can start looking ahead. Speaking of planning ahead, can you tell what these are? Now this is gonna be a little bit difficult, but I'll give you a hint. We planted them about three weeks ago and we did a video about it. So if you can tell us what this is, go ahead, leave that comment now. Hey folks, a couple of our community members mentioned that they hadn't seen some of our videos recommended to them. Make sure you have that notification bell clicked on so you don't miss any of our content. And if you haven't already done so and you're enjoying this video, go ahead and hit that like button for us. Now, another thing that you can do in the winter is to take care of your trees and your shrubs that need pruning while they're dormant. When they're dormant, that's the best time for most of these to go ahead and get in there and prune like these grapevines right here. Or these grapevines right here, which are definitely gonna need another pruning or, or some of our fruit trees, if they're in need of a pruning, the winter time when things are dormant, that's the time to go for it. All right, another thing that you can do that doesn't require you to spend a ton of time outside is to clean, organize, and sharpen your gardening tools. One of the prizes that we gave away a couple of videos ago was a tool, a garden tool sharpener. 
They're not that expensive, about $10, and you can get a hold of one of those sharpeners, and you can basically keep your gardening tools that might have dulled over a season's worth of use sharper and lasting a lot longer instead of going out and buying new. We'll put a link to that, just like we have a link to all the other giveaway prizes in the description. But this is the time to make sure everything is clean and ready to go. Because I can tell you from personal experience, it's very easy to leave your tools dirty, and certainly as your spades, as whatever it is that you like to use, use in the garden get dull, it becomes more of a challenge, especially if you have clay soil like we do here. So now's the time in the winter to go out, check what you have in terms of your tools, make sure they're in good working order, nice and sharp, nice and clean, and get them organized so when the spring comes, you don't have to sit there trying to figure out where all your stuff is and you can get right to work. By the way, another thing that you can do in preparation for the spring and summer, in addition to getting your tools cleaned and sharpened, is to get that wish list going of things you might like to add, tools that you might like to add for your upcoming gardening season. We've got about 20 recommendations down in the description of this video, and I know quite a few of you have said when you see the prize, even if you don't win, that's another thing you'd like to add to your garden collection. Because I tell you, in my opinion, when it comes to gardening tools, having quality is actually pretty important because you don't want something that's gonna break on you in the middle of planting. These are our potato seedlings. You can see how tall they're getting. They're ready to be transplanted into buckets. And in fact, I've already transplanted a few of them into our free buckets, hashtag save this bucket. And so these are gonna be growing and developing now. Check that out. Check how thick these stems are on these purple magic mollies. I'm really excited for that. If you didn't check out our video on the ways in which you can grow potatoes, you really should check that out now. Now, another activity you can take part in during the winter that's gonna keep you engaged in gardening is reading and research. There are so many books out there, so many sites, so many websites that have tons of information available to you about the gardening process. It's a great time to go ahead, get engaged, and learn. One of the early prizes from this giveaway series was was the square foot gardening book. I mean, there are tons of opportunities for you to read and learn more about gardening. And gardening is and always will be a massive learning experience for all of us. And with as easy as things have gotten to find information on the internet, and you do have to be careful because not everybody provides the right advice to you, but with as easy as that's gotten, it just makes sense to spend some time learning more about our craft. This is our curly leaf kale. You can see it's got some nice true leaves. It won't be more than a couple of weeks before we're harvesting off here. And then we have our quick star kohlrabi. This is like a 35, 38 day kohlrabi. It's got its true leaves on it. And this is a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning I dropped a seed in here. I'm not actually sure what seed I dropped though. But I can tell you that in this raised bed, it's kind of hard to see. Let me put my hand behind it. You see that point sticking up? That is our ginger. And we have another piece of ginger just coming up right in here. But there are also other ways to learn and grow as a gardener. In fact, if you have an extension office near you, or even really community gardens often offer up these opportunities as well, there are plenty of courses, plenty of classes that you can take to keep you engaged and to teach you a lot more about the gardening process. The extension offices are a wealth of information and classes, and sometimes the classes are even free. And on top of that, they sometimes offer classes to younger people as well. So plenty of opportunities for you to develop in addition to reading by taking classes and getting engaged in that gardening community, that larger gardening community. All right, I'm gonna briefly interrupt this video for our 23rd giveaway in our 31 days of Guten Gardening gardening gift giving series. Well, once again, we have over 90 entries into today's giveaway, our 23rd giveaway. Remember, if you wanna be entered into the next giveaway, all you have to do is leave a comment on this video or on one of our community posts between now and the next video. Let's go ahead and see what today's prize is. Well, we asked recently if we should add sweet potato slips as a prize and 81% of you said yes. So that's exactly what today's prize is going to be. Today, we're gonna to be giving away sweet potato slips from George's Plant Farm. That's taterman.com. You get to pick the variety. We'll talk about the number of slips once we reach out to you. Now, it is possible that somebody might not want sweet potato slips or have enough room. And if that's the case, we'll replace this giveaway with a $25 gift card. 
Well, let's go ahead and see who our day number 23 winner is. Remember, we have eight more giveaways left to go. Our winner today is Nicholas Quinette. Congratulations, Nicholas. Well done. Go ahead and congratulate Nicholas in the comments, but remember, don't say his name. So you can be surprised when he sees that he's won. And Nicholas, when you see you've won, go ahead and leave a comment on this video and we'll be in touch to show you how we get those sweet potato slips out to you. And guess what? We're gonna do a second prize today. So let's go ahead and see who our second winner is and just what they're gonna win. Our second prize is gonna come from our merchandise. We have t-shirts, we have aprons, but our winner today is going to receive from our Garden Nemesis series <laughs> from the Evil Empire, our I Love Potatoes 2 mug featuring a very innocent looking vole. Well, I think that's a fantastic prize. Let's see who's gonna win. Well, how about that for another prize? Two prizes in one video. Let's go ahead and see who the winner of our mug is. Oh my, our first repeat winner of the giveaway series, Kimberly La Mancha. You got a second prize, you get a mug. Well, congratulations, Kimberly. Fantastic. Go ahead and congratulate both of our winners in the comments. And once again, don't say their names. And Kimberly, when you see that you've won, go ahead and leave a message on this video and we'll be in touch to get that shipped out to you as quickly as possible. All right, let's head back to our video. I imagine that there are also probably plenty of gardening clubs in your area or areas close to you. So you might be able to find some information that way. You know what? The ginger that we planted in these smaller containers, this one's gotta be eight or nine inches tall already. This one's coming up. It's actually sprouting up two shoots here. You see that? This is really developing nicely. Now I'm obviously giving you peeks at what we have growing in our indoor garden. So I can't not say that one of the things that you can do in the winter time is to step into some indoor gardening. And I've said this many times before and I'm 100% serious when I say it doesn't matter how much space you allocate, whether it's a kitchen counter or a grow room in your basement, you should definitely give it a try. Give it at least a little bit of a try. Check out these herbs. I mean, indoor gardening is gonna take a different kind of time because of the amount of things that you have to control. You're in, in charge of all of the watering, all of the lighting. There's a ton to learn. So you wanna get invested and take time in the garden. This is a great way to do it over the winter. I wanna show you this. These are sage flowers. So this is the sage plant, you can see it. It's got these beautiful purple flowers. These will be what provide us our seeds. As they develop, they start to turn brown. But did you know that you could also eat them? They've got like a sweet kind of milder sage taste. And they're fantastic on salads. So when they go to seed like this, I can also enjoy some of the flowers too. By the way, folks, you're gonna see our green stalks several times in this video. And I should let you know that right now, for the next couple of days, they've got a buy one, get one 60% off sale for a green stalk of equal or lesser value. And you can add an additional $10 off to that using our code GUTEN at checkout. So there's a link to that in the description. Check out this spinach getting started here. Some of those true leaves coming. I wouldn't suggest to you getting involved in indoor gardening if I didn't really believe it was worth it. You see the Ruby Queen beets here? They're just getting ready to take off as well. And I mean that. I want to know what is something, let's say you've never grown indoors before, or maybe you have, but what is something that you could plan to grow indoors this season? Just even something small, just a little investment of space, no matter where it is. What could you possibly grow? Check out this callaloo. Isn't that just the most beautiful set of leaves here? Oh, I can't wait for this to grow further. Our chickpeas are now about 10 inches tall. Let's go up to this top tier. I gotta tell you, this is an exciting tier for me here in our green stalk. This is our Merlot lettuce. Look at those colors. Isn't that awesome? Our Merlot lettuce is going great. More chickpeas and our radishes, those greens, are magnificent right now, which means we're not too far off from starting to see the bulbs there. Now you can see we're a little overseeded here 
and we had a little less germination, but I've got some more of this lettuce coming up so we can do some transplanting soon. Now the winter solstice is December 21st or 22nd. In the Northern Hemisphere, that means the beginning of the lengthening of days. So another thing you can do is to keep an eye on the weather and on the forecast. And you do this for a couple of reasons. One, you can take advantage of any mild days to get outside and take care of any of the things that you didn't get done before that winter started. There's some cleanup that often comes at around this time of year for us if we have a nice warmer day. But beyond that, we like to pay as close attention as possible because we know when our average last frost is and that countdown can begin that countdown for spring. So paying attention to the weather and the calendar certainly has some benefits. I like a good countdown, how about you? And finally, if you haven't done this before, starting a gardening journal is a great option for keeping track of what's gone right and what's been rather challenging for you in your gardening experience. And the winter time can be an excellent time to get in there and review if you've already started a journal to reflect on what the growing season was like and to help you make some additional preparations. By the way, this is our Meyer lemon. It was infested, infested with aphids. Within three days of us adding the ladybugs, those aphids completely disappeared. I think about it this way. At the end of teaching a unit at school, whatever I'm teaching in class, I can easily then reflect on what went wrong. But a year later, when I come back to that same unit again, the likelihood of me remembering all the intricacies is not that great. And so getting a journal started, even in the winter time, because you can still reflect somewhat on that growing season that just happened. And again, that's also the same place that maybe you do some of your planning. I like to have our notes and then our layout of our bed side by side. I think it works really well for us. Look, if you allow it, winter can definitely be a season of recovery and preparation when it comes to gardening. Well, folks, even though winter may not be our favorite time of year when it comes to the overall gardening experience, there's still a ton that you can do to be involved in the garden and again, to prepare and to keep that gardening spirit alive. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.